Ya. Ey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Young Jesus. Yes, the young Jesus. <laughs> Parental discretion is advised. The Homecast. It's time for another violently loyal episode of the Hardcast. I'm your host Chris, and today I'm joined by Victor, Chris, Nas, Alter, my wizard. God damn it, you did it, didn't you? And Spanish. Pull over, man. Pull over. Tonight's review slash discussion is about the 2006 Hong Kong gangster movie Exile. Directed by Johnny Toe, starring Anthony Wong, Nick Chung, Francis Ng, Simon Yam, Ray Chung, and Lam Suet. Intense violence, friendship, honor, and camaraderie collide in this tale of battle-scarred gangsters in 1998 Macau. Blaze and Fat are dispatched by Boss Fei to take out former mobster, Wo, but Tai and Cat are determined to protect him. After a brief showdown, the whole group lays their weapons down and soon begin to rekindle old friendships. But it isn't long before the reunion is over, and the gang is hungry for the next score. So Victor, did Exile teach you that when it comes to honoring your lifelong friendships, it's better to go out in a blaze of glory than it is to flip a coin? Or would you rather have your meaty ball sack explode in a blood mist? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have to flip a coin on that one. All right. <laughs> well, how meaty is your ball sack exactly? <laughs> it's actually not meaty at all. It's just mostly mist. <laughs> Yeah, this movie opens up with these two gangsters arriving at this lady's house. Well, it's like a, an apartment building type deal, I guess. Yeah. The whole movie has this kind of sort of Western Mexican standoff vibe to it. I don't know if yeah, you guys know that. that. Yeah. And Johnny Toe actually picked that location because the way that the buildings look kind of give that sort of Mexican Spanish flair as far as the architecture goes. I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, anyways... um. Yeah, these two guys show up at Woe's house, but the wife answers and she says that he's not home or like that he doesn't live there. So they just start waiting there because they know for a fact that they live there. These two other guys come up, these two other gangsters, and the wife tells them the same thing. So they go over there and start waiting too, and then they... At the beginning groups. of the movie, you just feel like, whoa, is this really popular guy? Yeah. <laughs> but you have no idea what's going on. It's, everything's happening at a really slow pace. Throughout the movie, the story mostly kind of unfolds at a slow pace, like you said, and you learn things on the fly, like on the go. Yeah, so basically what's going on is the first two guys that showed up, they went to protect whoa, and then the other two guys went to kill him. This guy named Boss Faye sent those, the other two guys to kill him. But then the four guys, they like standing there on the courtyard, and they're looking at each other all quietly. So, like you said, Blaze and Fat are there, and they were sent there by Boss Faye because they still work in that gang. They were sent there because several years prior to this, Wo actually tried to kill Boss Faye, and Boss Faye still has the uh, scar. He wants right revenge. Right in the chest. Right. <laughs> he wants revenge, of course, because I think the whole thing was Wo was supposed to stay away, but he couldn't because he wanted to come back and kind of start a new life for his family and make money and all that. Plus, he was probably wanting to see his friends again. So he comes back. So the first thing that Boss Faye does is sends his best guys to go and take him out. The other two guys, which are Cat and Ty, all these guys grew up together. Yeah, all, all five of them were childhood friends. And they, yeah. they went up through the ranks. And I think that's when Wo tried to kill Boss Faye, I think, because Boss Faye wasn't really Boss Faye at the time. You see the loyalty is there, and it's just a lot of clash of friendship and loyalty and all that. Right. Yeah, so the gangsters are just waiting for Wo to come home. Right before he comes home, there's this, like, um, I think Vic, one of Victor's favorite characters shows up is um, kind of like this nerdy detective guy shows up in his car. He's not yeah. just tired, this old inspector. <laughs> he just shows up and like, what's going on? He yeah, goes out to investigate, and the dude with the longer hair, um, Cat sees his can, and he shoots it with his gun, and gets closer and closer to the um, inspector. Yeah, he manages like, to sh- shoot it while in midair also. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, dude, he's slick. I know, Cat is such a show-off. <laughs> the inspector gets all worried and leaves. Like, I just want to pass through. I just want to pass through, you know? He only has, like, five days left on the job. He just... Wants to well, that, that was the funny thing, because, yeah, like you said, he, he's about to retire. He knows something's going down, and these are Boss Faye's guys and all that. So he actually calls Boss Faye, and he says, I'm just trying to pass through, you know, I don't, I didn't see anything, and, you know, all this other crap. And then Boss Faye calls them and tells them to let him go. He goes through. It's kind of funny, the chain of command. Yeah, like, kind of, like all the way to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to go talk to Boss Faye, right? 
So Inspector leaves, and then Will shows up in this uh, like truck van thing, full of furniture. furniture. So um, well, instead of like all the all of them just shooting Will right then and there, they help him with the furniture, and they bring. Well, they into do that the after the first gunfight, but they, yeah, they help oh. him bring all the stuff upstairs. Oh, that was after, yeah. They all go up, and they all just take like a position in the apartment. Yeah, it's like um, like you said, the whole Mexican standoff vibe really is strong at this point in the movie. Will's wife and the kid are like in a separate room. They all take out whatever their guns are going to use. They're about to do a Mexican standoff, but they all count out which bullets they're going to use. Yeah, it's pretty cool because uh, Will pops out with, with a revolver, a six-shooter. Yeah, he opens so, the door and there's all these bullets. What the other guys did was like they, they took the clips out of the guns and they uh, unloaded a few bullets until they got exactly six left in the in They the try to make it fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have this shootout, but it was a pretty cool shootout. I mean, they take their positions over behind the, the, the doors or whatever. I don't know. I, I like the, this action scene. And one thing I have to mention, too, right here, is that for this viewing, we all watched it on Netflix streaming. I watched it with Victor, and then you showed it to Spanish at a later time. Right. I also own the DVD, and the DVD has really, really awesome sound. I think it's DTS track. And the directionality, especially when that one scene when the door's flipping after it's shot. Yeah, like 50 times. Right. That shit was crazy. That, yeah. that shit sounds awesome and the bass is crazy on netflix it sounds pretty good it's stereo though because it's streaming and it was an hd so it looked really nice but the audio wasn't quite the same so if anyone's wondering you should definitely try and get the dvd because the dvd's sound is really top notch especially in that scene and in all the action scenes actually all of the action scenes are beautifully made they're like all very <laughs> specific yeah yeah, they're very inventive and playful and kind of creative in the way he's... Stylish. He and yeah, extremely stylish. Yes. Nice verbiage. I know. <laughs> Got a little uh, bit sideways there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, um, so they run out of bullets. And um, they just put their guns away and they start to converse and just take seats and kind of catch up. It's been a long time since we've been in town and they just... But that's when they start bringing all the furniture up and they set it all up and they start cooking and it's just, it's yeah. just funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny because like, the guy's like, uh, let's talk. And then he's like, uh, where's your furniture? So that's when they decide to like help them move basically like oh, yeah. stuff from the truck to the house. And they just start rebuilding the doors and shit and everything that they... Did they, they have destroyed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. Well, it's, it was it's interesting because of the way they intercut extreme violence with something like helping your friend unload his furniture, you know, something that's just normal everyday life type stuff. And they just take it in stride like it's normal. You go from one event to the next and there's nothing weird about it. And <laughs> I don't know, the tone of the movie is so funny. Yeah, it's because of that. Yeah, so yeah, they move everything in, they start having dinner. But one of the funniest parts, though, is because during the shootout, a bullet got lodged in one of the pots. That they use to make like I guess like a like a soup or something, and then while the guy's eating, he actually spits the bullet out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny scene. That was funny. Oh, that was, I forgot about that. I think it was Fat actually who spit the bullet out. No, it was actually Blaze. So. <laughs> and oh, yeah. did you have something to say about Blaze that you wrote down in Spanish? Oh, well, it was more Victor's idea. I, I didn't get the... Wow, plan. I was going to give you all this credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, God knows Victor you was the one, but, yeah, but Victor was the one that pointed it out that he looked like Billy Bob Thornton. He kind of is the Billy Bob Thornton of Asia. He's like in a ton of shit, and he plays like a wide variety of roles. Yeah. And just like Billy Bob Thornton, he went through a fat phase and then a skinny phase. Yeah, and then to like a Mr. Woodcock phase, yeah. But it's so, yeah, he's a Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, because he wears the same glasses, too, that Billy Bob wears on some of the movies. I wonder if they, like, FedEx them to each other, you know? Like, oh, I'm about <laughs> to do a movie. Can I have the glasses back? He's like, sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, yeah, enough was... about Billy Bob. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even in the movie yet. So, anyways, uh, after dinner, they start asking him why he came back. What Will basically tells him is that he needs money to support his family. So, like, he wants their help to get him on his feet or get their family, you know, what they need. One last score that will set him up. Right. Afterwards, the next day after. Well, we have to say, too, that Blaze agrees to it, but with the condition that after the job's done, that he gets to kill Will because that's what Boss Faye wants. Okay, so afterwards, they go to this hotel place to meet this guy called Jeff with an outstanding name like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a name completely random, like all these different names. Like, yeah, I'm Jeff. Like, come on, dude. It's so weird. <laughs> right. So it's it's kind of interesting, though, about how Asians, they usually pick weird names. As, as far as, like, um, there's a director named Ringo Lam, and his, he, picked, his name, he was named after one of the Beatles. Ringo. Yeah, Ringo Starr. Right. I don't know. That sounds interesting, you know, like Ringo Lam. But Jeff, I mean, who the hell are you <laughs> named after? Some random Canadian or something? I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> 
いや、色知り永遠